Welcome back to Dirty Teeth and thanks so much for tuning in. Today's office is Quigley Nordic Center in beautiful Haley, Idaho, and this is day six of my so Ride 365 challenge. This is a vlog rant with pretty much no editing where I get some stuff off my chest while riding a bike. Kind of like a journal entry with great views. Today, unfortunately, I'm venting about a friend of mine who recently got busted for drug dealing. A somber subject, but I hope you enjoy the scenery. Got hit with some bad news, some sad news on Facebook of all places yesterday. Rarely ever check Facebook, but turns out a friend of mine got busted for having a drug dealing operation going out of her house. And it really is hurting my heart right now. So you're probably thinking, oh, Dude, they're a deadbeat, who cares? Like, they got what they deserve. But let me tell you what's really going on here. So, excuse me for the being out of breath. I'm climbing a little. And I just got on the bike, so. Cut me some slack, Jack. So yeah, about eight years ago, I think. Um, yeah, it was before Longmire. So yeah, about eight years ago, I was doing a job shooting a pilot a TV pilot for a, a documentary uh, called The Third Estate. And we were in South Dakota filming on the Rosebud Reservation, which is supposed to be one of, if not the worst, Native American reservation in the country. Uh, it's a Lakota reservation. And we went there filming this show about social injustice. And, you know, especially on the res, that's what this was about. And I spent a couple weeks there uh, in and around Rosebud. Um, during my stay, completely unrelated to the show we were filming, uh, I met this girl and decided I wanted to help her. So, rewind a little there. Um, we made friends with the locals and they invited myself and the director of the show to join in in a sweat, uh, in a sweat ceremony. At the time, I had no clue what a sweat was. I knew what it was to go in a sauna uh, and get hot and sweat. But I had no idea about the spiritual ramifications of an actual sweat ceremony um, that the Lakota people invited us hey, to be part of. Uh, anyway, at the sweat, which by the way, was amazing. You know, you go into a tent and, you know, there's a lot of prayer and a lot of chanting and it's dark and they're pouring water and making steam on the fire and it's almost unbearably hot. Actually, for me, it was unbearably hot um, to the point of practically hallucinating. You got to cover all your exposed body with towels to make sure you don't burn. And every time psh, they pour some water on the fire, you know, it just gets hot, hotter in the tent so quickly. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, they were laughing at these two white guys who couldn't handle the heat. <laughs> um, anyway, at this ceremony, afterwards, we were invited in uh, to one of the local elders' homes and they were cooking up fry bread and we were just hanging, uh, drinking like, strawberry, like Tampico style punch and fry bread. Not too healthy, but when in Rome, right? And I met this girl, I won't say her name uh, for privacy, but uh, she was paraplegic and she was just kind of bumming out. Um, people carrying her around from her wheelchair to a chair and Honestly, she just seemed like a kind of lump on a log. 
we chatted a little bit and I learned her backstory um, that she had been a basketball star basically at her high school and on prom night or homecoming night I can't quite remember anyway she was in a car filled with a bunch of teenagers and uh, the driver uh, of a, another vehicle I believe I can't remember actually if it was the driver of her car or the driver of an, the other vehicle anyway car crash she comes out paraplegic at age like 17 changes her life she's a lump on a log uh, really down in the dumps so at the time I was teaching at disabled sports a lot volunteering in mammoth at the disabled sports program i had a really good friend still do uh one of the most inspirational people i've ever met named jeremy mcgee who himself is a paraplegic and who we made a feature-length documentary film about uh, when he climbed and skied bloody cool War in mammoth whole other story uh you gotta watch that documentary though anyway jeremy Super, super inspirational, 100% independent paraplegic. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, we got to get this girl off her ass to learn that there is life after injury. She's getting crap all the medical treatment uh, at the hospital on the res, and, you know, they don't know what's going on. So I talked to my buddy Brad, who uh, is another amazing human being. And we figure out a way, look, we're gonna go back there, we're gonna raise some money. We're gonna take her to Mammoth for a week or two and show her, introduce her to other disabled people that are doing stuff with their lives, that are positive influences on everybody they meet and inspirations, instead of just sitting at home and smoking weed and feeling sorry for yourself. You know, you play basketball, you know, you can play wheelchair basketball, stuff like that. So long story short, we talked to my buddy, uh, Brian, who's a PT guy in Mammoth, good friends with a neurologist at USC because her doctors couldn't even, like, her mother wasn't completely convinced that she was actually permanently paralyzed because her medical treatment was so poor they didn't even have enough uh, knowledge to know what's going on. So talk to Brian. He hooks us up with a top neurologist at USC. We get her to LA. Oh, and somehow she agreed to do all this. You know, obviously we fronted the money. We raised the money for it. And we fly her to LA. Brad and I meet her. We take her to, the, to USC. She gets tests done, yada, yada, yada. Our buddy Jason is the star of this uh, TV show soap opera called General Hospital. We take her to the set to meet Jason. Okay, cool. That's LA. Now we get in a car, we come up to Mammoth, my home, and we take her to Disabled Sports. We got her the mountain. Mammoth Mountain actually donated an apartment for her to stay at um, I guess I'm jumping the gun here what turned into a one-week visit wound up being uh, like a six-month scholarship to live in Mammoth through a winter but I'm jumping the gun so back to the one week we came up she met people we went pontoon fishing out on Convict Lake this is you know summertime now uh, you know pontoon fishing we went and she played wheelchair basketball with a bunch of disabled cats in the gym. She rode bikes. We took her on everything. Kathy, the head of disabled sports, took her in like a daughter and just showed her the ropes. And man, we could all just see the light in her eyes, the spark change. And, you know, she met Jeremy and she met all these other disabled cats that were doing transfers themselves, getting in and out of their car by themselves, doing their daily stuff 
all by themselves. And she started to feel, you know, dare I say, kind of like a loser for counting on everybody else to handle their crap for her. So she built up strength and was able to get in and out of her chair, transfer into a car, and really started just seeing improvement. Anyway, like I said, th that time during the summer morphed into coming, you know, she went home for a couple months and then came back out with a scholarship to spend a winter in Mammoth. Mammoth Mountain donated an apartment in, uh, you know, an employee housing for her to stay at. She had a roommate. Only rule, no, don't smoke weed. You know, you make sure you blah, blah, blah. And she spent the whole winter in Mammoth. And it was fantastic, man. She was skiing. She learned how to ski. She was doing everything. So damn proud of her. So this is why this hurts. I, I, I've given you this backstory now. When I find out yesterday that a car was pulled over last week on the res, on Rosebud, and uh, they found a little bit of weed in the car and got a search warrant for the house. Next thing you know, they found a lot of stuff, more than just weed and uh, a whole drug sale distribution operation and to know that it was this this sweet girl that made so much progress and has fallen back into the crappy res life so it hurts it's been years since i've talked to her or her mom my older daughter who's 11 knows her she was sitting on her lap on her chair when she was in mammoth anyway i'm sorry for ranting or venting but I'm just pissed and sad someone with so much potential to piss it away again when we had the hopes that she'd make something and do better uh, i don't know man but this res if any of you have ever been to the res reservation like this place rosebud it's like a third world country in there it is in the middle of the most beautiful scenery i saw some of the most beautiful sunsets it, on the res and but yet there's burned down houses from the gangs you know they don't even have, they don't have the money to buy guns they just burn each other's houses down like when they have beefs or crap with each other they were literally like, okay, I'm going to go down the block. I'm going to burn down that rival gang member's grandma's house. And then guess what? There's no money. That house doesn't get rebuilt. There's a pile of rubble. Hey, my car stopped working. But we don't have money to fix it or do whatever it takes. That car just gets parked and is a jalopy, never gets moved. Turns into crap peeps. And there's just junkyards like this all over. And it's disturbing and it's disgusting. Most Americans have no clue that that is happening in this country. And again, I'm not political. I'm not trying to, I'm not going to get into that. But it is just sad that within America, there are these trenches of third, third world living, um, you know, the, the super high rate of suicide way higher than the national norm you know high school kids killing themselves because of this crap life and it hurts you know the reses are dry yet people are still getting high and drunk i'm trying to keep my voice down a little because all these people skiing by me i i mean when i was there to get around it people were buying lysol and cracking open the cans and just huffing Lysol. Stuff like that. Anyway, sorry for the rant. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but I just hope in my heart of hearts that my friend uh, can work through this, can learn from it, come out and grow. And maybe this is the tipping point 
I'm going to pray that this is the turning point she needs to become a better person and, and move past this. She knows she has friends who care and will do anything for her. So, uh, anyway, on that note, welcome to the channel. Welcome to beautiful Idaho. I'm out here at Quigley Nordic. Uh, just taking an afternoon spin, getting some of that off my head, continuing my 365 day ride challenge. I believe today is number six or something. Just started, still fresh, but taking it super serious. Um, anyway, if you got any comments, please throw them in the comment section. Otherwise, you know what to do. Please give us a like subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure more people see our videos and that you don't miss one so thanks and remember ride bikes drink beer live happy see you on the next one thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy.